Good morning. We have us just one more load after this. We're gonna have a pretty fun day. There's a new piece of equipment coming on the farm. Add to the versatility of our skid loader. So we're gonna be playing around with that. It's gonna show up here in a little bit. I am excited to say the least. About as excited as these girls getting their morning rations. Looks like the cattle did a great job. See what we're doing today is what the cows, our heifers, have been doing for the last couple days. Except we're using machine and they used their mouths and their feet to stomp a bunch of overgrown weeds up. I think the heifers are done, so we're gonna shut all these gates up so they don't get stuck out here. Hi Ellie. Things moved out of the way, fuel in it. Let's grease the Zerks. Should have done this sooner. The wind is about two miles an hour and we had a pretty nice dew this morning. And I think all of our trash cans are full so I should have been burning some trash. Oh, and the burn barrel's full too. Now we're just waiting. That tool will be here in just a little bit. We're gonna have some fun. That is a piece of machinery right there. Yeah, you can see it up front that's for sure so we're here with our good friend matt they're back and todd, todd yeah. all right and they they're from uh diamond mowers uh they brought out their brush cutter brush pro. cutter pro so in april i think it was they brought out the disc mulcher mm -hmm. and uh you saw us destroy some stuff with that so this is more of a i wouldn't say it's smaller but it's it does a little less damage with this we're kind of doing brush tall weeds and some smaller, really small trees. Yeah, that's right. So if it's if it's trees, if it's heavy brush, that's really where the disc mulchers come in. If it's grass, uh, invasives, Canadian thistle, that kind of stuff, up to your occasional trees, that's where these brush cutters come in. Absolutely. There's only 100,000 people watching. <laughs> uh, obviously, it's pretty wide. What are we working with here? 72 inches, so six feet of cut. Hmm, wow. Yep, and then as we can see, it's just like the other one we were running. Stay back 300 feet. You know, it's there's how fast is that thing spinning? Uh, yeah. So the tips, right, all the way out here, they're going about 17,000 feet per minute. They are cruising. So what's that in miles per hour? Oh man, I'll get back to you on that one. Yep, I'm making you look bad. Yeah, you are. Yep. Thanks, Cole. For that. <laughs> we have a standard flow hydraulic system on our skid loader, and mm -hmm. so you guys have different motor sizes to accommodate that or how does that work yeah that's exactly right so you brought it up right with the speed of these blades so what we do is we match the size of the motor to the amount of flow that your skid steer kicks out right it's actually one of the things that differentiates us from a lot of the other players in this market space so we would consider this one of our two standard flow options and what we're doing is we are sizing this motor to your standard flow circuit on your s250 to get the ideal tip speed if we use a motor that was a little bit too big the blades would be going slow enough that it wouldn't cut very cleanly 
if we used a motor that was too small, the blades would actually get going so fast that you're starting to get into some dangerous territory, right? Stay back 300 feet. These things are dangerous. Um, so we're trying to uh, be Goldilocks with our blades, right? Not too fast, not too slow, just right. Um, and then, like we mentioned last time, I don't know if this one has a sticker. Yes, it does. I really appreciate the Made in the USA, but not only that, just an hour and a half east of here in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, is where these are built. So we're working with a not only USA product, but a very local product as well. Yeah, that's right. And we do our best to source it as much local components as we can. So we're using an Eaton motor, right? U.S. built. This, the spindle is coming uh, from the U.S. as well. This, uh, this is as made in the U.S. as you can get. So what do we have this fancy sticker right here? Yeah, for sure. So this is your warranty registration. Uh, super important that you get that registration in. This is a new way to, to register warranty. So that'll take you to, uh, to our site um, where we've got a video up there that'll show you a little bit about how to use this product. It'll get you to a parts book page so that when you do need to order some replacement blades, you can do that. Um, yeah, it's the, the direction that we're trying to take all of our warranty registrations now. Mm -hmm. And then in addition to that, you know, a lot of farmers like us lack in uh, keeping a clean, pristine looking yard. And that's why we have this product out on our farm today. And so we have a link below that will take you to the website, their website, so you can learn more about this uh, Brush Cutter Pro and uh, I guess any other products that you'd be interested in from diamond mowers. So like we were talking about earlier, uh, you know, this is really heavy grass, invasive, small trees, heavy brush, that kind of thing. And so when you're cutting that heavier material, it's nice to be able to cut those stumps flush with the ground, right? So you don't have all those stickers up there to screw up tires and everything else. So you might notice that we have an angled skid shoe here. Uh, this forward angle on the skid shoe allows you to get the leading edge of the blade right flush with and in fact even just a little bit below the ground so, so that you can cut those stops and those stumps cleanly off, right? Uh, as we keep coming around, we're using a big old 5 8 inch flat cut knife. Uh, we call this a brush knife. Um, it does a really nice job for us on grass as well as those trees and the brush. Um, you know, we, we knew that people weren't going to be buying this to be able to go mow their lawn, right? That's not what this is about. This is about cutting heavy material, and that's what this blade is for. We're also putting a push bar on this product. Uh, the push bar is intended to be able to fell that tree in the direction that you want it to go. We definitely don't want those trees to come back over the top, right? Um, as we keep coming around, the only maintenance point on this head, besides the blade, is what we call the spindle. So this spindle runs in an oil bath. It's just 80-20 gear loop. Uh, change that out once a year. That's the only uh, maintenance on this thing. There's not a grease zerk anywhere to be found. Well, I guess the only thing left is to try it out. Let's go do it. So how'd we do? Perfect, man. Motor right down, and I really didn't feel like there was only a couple times where I felt like I should back up a little bit, let it pick up speed, but for the most part, it worked like a charm. Yeah. And plus, most of that's how big of a skid loader you have, too. Yeah, yeah, for sure. How much yeah. hydraulic horsepower you have to work with, no yep. doubt about it. Yeah, well, that looks pretty good, and uh, I'm going to start cleaning up that a little bit more, and then got a bunch of equipment move over, and then tons of other places to clean up. Yeah, and that's just it, right? It's kind of, sort of this Swiss Army knife product. It just it does the work no matter no matter what that work is. Well, I guess we got work to do now. I mean, look at all this look at all this overgrown stuff that we got to tend with. But we're gonna make quick work of it. I got to give one more shout out to Diamond Mowers. Uh, they've they've treated us pretty well and let us show off one of their well built machines. <sighs> Let's hop in the air conditioned cab and have a little fun.
The weeds are crying. But those sunflowers hardly remembered we had a bale accumulator and a manure spreader back here. Later we'll move those, get them in this spot, move a bunch of other junk over here, and then get even closer. I was just trying not to suck up the PTO shaft sitting up front here into the front of that thing. It'd make good video, but I don't want to break stuff, especially not on the first day. Barely saw this. Hmm. It could have been fun for you guys, but I'm sorry. I was I was looking for it. So when we were hooking it up over here, Matt about gave me a heart attack. He said, "You got a fire." I'm like, "Oh, oh!" It was it was just the smoke was coming around the corner. I think I think I'd be fired if I burned all our bales down for the year that are just sitting all next to each other. The entire harvest freaked me out. I said. Mad, it's just the burn barrel. Look at these grasshoppers. What? What's that one doing on the top of the other? Get up. You nasty things, get off my diamond mower. There's a squeenie. Oh, there he goes. I missed him. That looks a lot better. Then I can throw that four wheel drive right here and come back with the forks and move that chisel, clean up around the chisel. <laughs> I pushed a bunch of weeds up to that fence and the Herefords are eating on it. You're welcome. This is, I believe, one inch thick steel right here. And it's just, it kind of acts as a big flywheel, big, a bunch of weight and that's what Holds a lot of momentum. Very cool. You know, these aren't very sharp, but they don't need to be. They just need to be strong. It's the tip speed that cuts. It's all about how fast it's going. You know, you can cut with anything. You can cut something with a piece of your hair if it's flying fast enough, I think. I don't know, I'm not a scientist.
I'm gonna unhook this, put the bucket on, move some equipment around, put it back on, clean stuff up, finish it up, get back in that AC, you know what I'm saying? I didn't anticipate that. Oh, there's a squeenie. Look at him go. What's that made out of? Gummy worms? I like running that thing a lot better than the string trimmer I ran to get the weeds right along this the other day. Are you a diamond mower too? Are you mowing the grass with your mouth? What are you doing? You goofball. She just came out of the garage and in the garage there's a big bowl full of food. I guess she's got a grass craving. Out of the stuff around the yard taken care of with that thing I'll need to bring it to a couple other of our farms like at the south farm where we got to work some cattle there's some overgrown weeds that'll just be annoying we'll be tripping on them cattle will be tripping on them right now I'm gonna run to Storla station hang out seems like they had a pretty fine day in Storla there was a couple from Ohio and a couple from Illinois that stopped there today I think that's gonna be about it for today if you're wanting any information on the Brush Cutter Pro, just click on that link below and it will direct you to a page with information. Plus they have a little form on there that you can fill out if you have questions and they should get back to you fairly quickly. But thanks for watching everyone. Hopefully you all had a great day. We'll see you next time. Have a good one. Hello, I'm not Johnny Cash, but we are standing in front of the Johnny Cash Museum. And barbecue, the museum and the barbecue, and there's a live band playing, and and the song of the day is uh, "True Love of Mine" by Johnny Cash and Bob Dylan. Cool. Yeah, they're very good together. We're having a good time. All right. Talk to you later. Okay, bye. That was your song of the day. <laughs>